Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and this is the Moto X second generation update video. This is almost like two weeks after dunking this device in water. So I did two separate tests with this device, and the reason I did these tests is because this has a water-resistant nano coating that is covering all of the internal components and also the outside as well. So the claim is that, just say you were to splash this unit, it should be just fine. So of course I wanted to test this because situations where you see these devices getting wet is in the rain or if you drop it in the sink, sometimes if you drop it in the toilet, just those types of examples. So I wanted to push it, see where we got with that. So in the first test, I put it in water for 20 seconds. I just let it sit there. So if you were to just drop your phone in the sink and there's water in it, we're not talking about running water, but there's just water in it. Once I took it out, I let it dry off for an hour and it was functioning just fine after that hour. So I did another test where I put it underneath the water for two minutes that time. And of course I had to push it a little further, swish it about a bit, see what happened when water actually got into the device. When I did that, after several minutes, this device completely freaked out. The device went into a boot loop, then the display stopped working and then the battery overheated and that is really not ever something good. So I knew that some water damage had been done to it. The moral to the story is that if you happen to drop your phone in the sink for like just a second, it should be okay. If you are in the rain, it should be okay. But never drop this fully submerged in water and expect it to survive. That's basically what we're getting at here. So the device has come back to life a little bit. Sometimes it'll throw itself into a boot loop. Sometimes it actually boots up and I can feel that the digitizer is working and I can say stuff like, okay, Moto X, What's the weather like today? Opening Google. Today's forecast for Seattle is 57 degrees with rain. Yeah, so you can see that it is booting. Something is working. It is holding a charge and everything now. But the display is just destroyed. So I'm expecting if I take it apart, it's possible that I might see some burn marks on the ribbon cable or something going on with it. When I put the Moto E in water, when I took it out, took it apart, I saw that there was a burn mark on the backlight cable. Unfortunately, these displays are over 200 bucks, way over 200 bucks. So the repair on this is quite pricey versus something like the Moto G or the Moto E. So I wanna take it apart and see if there's any water left inside it or anything. I don't expect the display to work ever again properly. So I'm curious to take it apart, see what we find. Since this device is already damaged, I really wasn't so caring. And you can see that I made a nice line here trying to get this back portion off. Well, there's actually a bit of a trick to it. You should take the SIM tray out and you can see that there's a hole. So what you're supposed to do is take something and push it through this hole here and it pushes the back outward. But for me, I've already pried this thing up, so whatever. The thing with these back covers I realized is it's easy to damage them. They are not meant to be taken off. And it's just a double-sided adhesive that's holding these down. So you can see that's really all we've got there. Then underneath you've got access to all these screws. I'm using a T3 screwdriver, Torx 3. So this part right here is just plastic. And then underneath you've got the battery. It says you can pull these tabs to remove the battery. So let's just go ahead and remove all of these screws. These should be the same size. So I've removed all the little black screws. They are all the same size. Don't want to lose these. There's a lot of them. And then there was a bracket right here with a different colored screw. These are the silver screws now. Let's put those aside. So what that bracket does is keeps these buttons in place. And then we've got some screws right here I want to remove as well. Let's take off this Motorola insignia button thing. So now these screws are up and be very gentle with this. It's just stuck on with double-sided adhesive and it's very flimsy. Yeah, so this little metal part is all that's holding this dimple on to put your finger. 
So we've got these little rubber tab things and I removed this one and right underneath here we can see some type of corrosion or something going on there. I will see what all these connectors lead to. I've got another one of these rubber things right here. This is protecting some other ribbon cable connectors. And right here we've got some capped on tape that is covering some other connectors. So I'm just going to undo everything here. This is like a blind take apart. I have no idea exactly what everything is leading to just yet. So I'm just popping up all these little clips. Here's another one. And this is just being held down here with Kapton tape, double-sided adhesive. So it looks like this whole little piece here is being held in with just double-sided adhesive. Pull out this ribbon cable. And I've got some tweezers here just to get underneath the double-sided adhesive very, very, very so carefully. I have no idea if I'm actually going to put this back together. At this point, I'm really hoping that the battery didn't leak. This is probably for the battery. So the next thing, we've just got some clips down in here. They actually released themselves. We've got one there, one right here. If I can show you how that mechanism works. You can see this little black clip and you just push it to the side. But otherwise, this whole part just lifts right out. There's no ribbon cables that are connecting anything. There's nothing you have to worry about of ripping. Now immediately, this must be for the display. I can see that there is a little bit of a burn mark or something going on right there. I'll have to take a better look at that. Pull to remove battery. All right then, let's see how this works. Pull to remove battery. This battery is just stuck on with double-sided adhesive. I'm surprised this battery still works. This is not all that easy to push out. So now I've got this battery out. You can see it's got this bent shape to it. At least the battery looks okay. It doesn't look like it's been leaking or anything. But on several different areas, we can see that we've got quite a bit of issues here. You see we have some problems here. Here, this device was just fried when I put it in the water. Now I find this mid-frame to be interesting because it's not quite what I expected. Most of it is plastic and then you've got a little bit of metal so you only have the frame that is metal. And we can see here where the metal mends with the plastic. This outer metal band is interesting because it does function as this phone's antenna. We've got little cutouts here to prevent any issues with signal. This part right underneath here looks like the coil, the NFC coil. You can see that it's fracturing. You can see the contacts here that are for the standard headphone jack, touch right here on the board. Let's go ahead and continue disconnecting things. I'm curious about this SIM tray. The SIM tray hasn't been working since I got this device. Somebody did something to it. So all these connectors have capped on tape on top of them. I am not so sure about this capped on tape. It seems they leave the capped on tape there for protective reasons, but then just say that this thing is put through their Iridian P2I process and it's supposed to cover everything, all the internal components of this device, to say that the tape moves or something when you put it in water. Then all of these parts here are left not protected. So we can see that there is some definite burn marks here. Let's go ahead and remove the capped on tape here as well. Looks like we've got some corrosion here as well. This is not pretty. Use my nails, pull that upward. Let's do the same here. And we've got a little connector here for the camera, also covered with capped on tape. Camera's easy to remove. So 
Simple as that. Take a look at this ribbon cable here. Ooh, look at that. That is fried. Move that as well. This entire thing just looks corroded, fried, and done for. I've also found the connector here for the front-facing camera that's also easy to remove. It just sits right there. You can see we've got our vibrating module right here. Now the board lifts right out except for just a little bit of what seemed to be double-sided adhesive down under here. You can see we've got another ribbon cable there. This little part here I just pried up with some tweezers, just stuck on with some double-sided adhesive. So this main board comes right out there. You can see we've got the speaker here at the bottom. We've also got the micro USB charging port. Playing around with it, we've got a little bit of a silicone gasket that was covering that. Should help keep stuff out of it. You've got another gasket right here covering the microphone. So this device is quite modular. I'm seeing there's a lot of little bits and pieces. You can see my desk there. Stuff, lots of little pieces and such. So right here we have the receiver, which you can see is definitely not a full-blown speaker. Yeah, there we have the receiver right here. So this device really has only one full speaker down here at the bottom. Looking at the other side of the main board, we can see these infrared sensors. Also the proximity sensor. Two more infrared sensors down at the bottom there. I can see those pins for the SIM tray look kind of gnarly and bent. Ugh. So here's the display assembly and this is what's really going to cost you if this is what's wrong with it. And we can see that burn mark there on that ribbon cable. So this is to the display, this is for the AMOLED display, and then this looks like we've got the digitizer, little chip under here, touchscreen controller. This is a design that I see a lot now. It's a bit of shame that this glass is fused here to everything. So the digitizer, the glass, and also the AMOLED panel are all in this one structure. So this whole thing will need to be replaced. At least taking this device apart is actually pretty easy to do since everything is more or less modular. A lot of things are stuck on with double-sided adhesive and you've got screws just to hold the whole thing together on the outside. The one grueling part is this. You can see it's easy to stretch out leather and to damage it. Happened down there at the bottom as well. I really wonder what it costs to replace these. If I could find these through third party, if I can remove it without damaging and scratching up the unit, that might be kind of fun to change them at the time I feel like it. I'm just playing around with some other stuff on here, pulling things apart, looking underneath things. You can see that we have the camera. We can see that here is the ribbon cable here for the flash. We've got the dual LED flash here with that diffuser ring. That's what this looks like. It's two. This connects onto the main board for the flash. This looks like it's for the NFC. Then we've got the volume button part here. That was being held in by double-sided adhesive just been attached to this metal bracket here and that's what this little cable that was for one of the first ones I disconnected on the back for the volume buttons that removes pretty easily again just double-sided adhesive so that is a part that is easily replaceable if you can find it and purchase it now look what I got and done look at my desk here so by now I'm sure this is all in vain but I'm just kinda of cleaning up some of the parts on the board where I see some water damage a Q-tip and isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, I'm going to try putting it back together. Why not? I don't want to leave my desk a mess like this. Whoa. This is going to be fun. I have to remember how to do it in reverse order. So I took some time putting this device back together. Everything's now squared to go and back in place. And it's not any better. It's the same. So it's just broken. And I will not be paying the money to get a brand new display for this thing. The SIM tray wasn't working to begin with anyway. So now it's just a phone for parts, basically. So there you have it. That is the Moto X. It's been taken apart and everything was just flat and reversed to put it back together. 
I like that it's modular. I like that it's easy to take apart. That battery is not so easy to take out though. And you can kind of bend the battery, warp the battery a little bit, which is not a good thing at all. But at least this device is repairable, but that display costs half the price of the device. So if you crack the glass, don't think you can just change the glass. It's sealed on to the AMOLED display beneath it and the digitizer and everything's incorporated into one piece. So as a follow-up to a dunk test, will the Moto X survive water? No. I saw many, many spots of water damage, and even the display ribbon cable had a nice, sizable burn mark on it. Oh, well. So now I wanted to take a second to thank my sponsors over at lynda.com so much for making content creation possible. lynda.com is an online video database that has over 100,000 video tutorials that are taught by recognized industry experts. There are so many different topics that you can pick from, such as if you want to learn how to program Android applications, if you want to learn how to build a website, video editing, photography, there's just so many different topics and they upload new videos every single week so everything stays relevant. So basically, lynda.com is there to help you enhance your digital world. You can learn new skills, you can keep up to date with your software, or you can just form a new hobby. But what I like best about lynda.com is that they are all about learning at your own pace. I am a college graduate. I know how difficult it is to sit during lectures and to commit yourself during an entire course or semester or whatever it is. But with Lynda, if you want to, you can watch a couple videos at a time at your own pace, or you can sit for hours and hours learning something. You can even take it on your Android phone on the go or on your iPhone. So they are really all about learning, but at a pace that's right for you. So for $25 a month, you have unlimited access to their entire database of videos. But for you guys, there's a seven day free trial. So if you follow lynda.com slash Erica, you can try out lynda.com, watch all the videos that you'd like over the next seven days. And if it's a service that works for you, you can stick around. It's a really great source of information. And if not, you just got seven days of free videos and it also helps my channel. So it's a win-win. So again, check out lynda.com slash Erica. It really helps out my channel. And I really think that they're a great source of information. So thank you everybody for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. It died it. I killed it. Oh well, it was all in the name of science, right? It was kind of fun, kind of worth it. I love taking things apart, and I'm sure some of you might get some information as to how to fix your device, hopefully. So now it shall sit as a paperweight. Have a good night, everybody.